you my my dear sisters, your excellencies, first ladies, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Rasha Kelich and your team. Thank you very much. We this is our first participation as Namibia, and maybe it's opportune to share our experience on the HIV side. Of our many programs, one of the programs works with adolescent um, HIV, and we've learned a key lesson that it's difficult to talk about HIV to young people as a standalone topic. The second lesson that we've learned from a statistical perspective is that men do not go for treatment as easily as women do. The third lesson around taboo and HIV is that you cannot have it as a standalone health service. It has to be part of integrated services. I share these three lessons because I think when it comes to infertility, the same is absolutely true. So what we'd like to do is really use our experiences and our platforms that we're currently engaging and incorporate infertility into that discussion. I think it was my sister from Ghana and a few other of my sisters who mentioned the problem around stigma, stigma and infertility. And why in African countries the social and the cultural issues and, and the value we attribute to children makes infertility such a difficult topic to discuss. I think as women, all of us know that when we got married, the first advice you get from your relatives is make sure you have a baby. As we all associate that, that a marriage cannot be solid if you don't have your own children, especially if he has children for somebody. We all know this not to be true, but the stigma and the pressure that comes with that sentiment is profound. So we know that infertility is not just a health issue, it's also a social issue. And part of fixing it is really ensuring access to quality reproductive health for not only women, but for men as well. The challenge in Namibia, and I think Merck Foundation will be instrumental in this challenge, is that our infertility services are not incorporated into our public health services. And the consequence of that is that we do not have any statistics around infertility in Namibia. The only statistics we have are private health facilities that are very expensive and not accessible to the poor. So in addition to the stigma, there's also a lack of data and that is really a critical aspect that we need assistance on. The lack of a legal framework is another challenge and it's good to see that Milk Foundation does give support in that respect. And Dr. Kellers, you'll be very happy to hear that we are busy with a policy framework in Namibia so that we can start on the issues around the infertility. In terms of the lack of experts, we're fortunate that Milk Foundation has sponsored four experts and one of the solutions around the high costs is really to integrate it in other health reproductive systems. From a political level, there is commitment to ensuring that there is integration of baseline infertility care in the health sector. And in terms of my role, I think we'll be looking at seeing how we do a relaunch because there was already a Merck um, more than mother's ambassador in Namibia who was appointed in May 2018. So I think once we, 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 we get the logistics around that issue, um, then we'll start talking about an ambassadorship. So I think we have a lot of lessons to learn around the public response around HIV to apply to infertility because... And one of them is really to make sure that we do screening. So the same time that we do cancer screening, we do HIV screening, we also do infertility screening, as well as screening of um, sexually transmitted. And that way we can apply the principles of prevention is better than cure. And we can also apply the principles that early detection can lead to immediate treatment. So I look forward to this opportunity to listen to my fellow sisters who are deeply engaged in the issue, as I think we have a lot to learn. Thank you very much, Ms. Thank you very, very much.